What's up, Laker fans? The Lakers jumped up and got the fourth pick in the NBA draft. In this video, we take a closer look at one of the options there, Virginia forward DeAndre Hunter. There's a table of contents in the description if you want to skip around at any point. Speaking of the description, check out the Vivid Seats link to get $30 off of your next order with them. Before we look at Hunter's game, let's take a look at the physical tools he's working with. At 6'7", 225 pounds, with a 7'2 wingspan, he's got excellent size for an NBA wing. He doesn't have a great deal of explosion vertically, especially off of one foot. And he has a strong preference for dunking with two hands. This, along with a couple of other things that he does later in the video, suggests that his hands are a little on the small side, but we don't know that for sure because there aren't any measurements. But he's very powerful when he can get both feet under him and both hands on the ball. Hunter has average straight line speed and a below average first step. Think of him as a big and strong wing rather than a quick and twitchy one. Hunter doesn't use those physical tools to get many steals or blocks, but rather to stop his opponent in their tracks. He does that with a couple of different techniques. Let's first focus on how he uses his wingspan. Watch his hands, which mirror the direction that Jarrett Culver moves the ball while in triple threat position. Once Culver commits to driving to his right, a hunter once again mirrors him by getting his left arm out and up while sliding his feet in an angle to beat him to the spot, forcing a bad miss. The offensive player drives left, so Hunter's right arm goes out on the defensive slide, mirroring the man he's defending. He keeps him in front of him and contests high. Here his man drives left so his right arm goes out. Then his man half spins the other way so Hunter's left arm goes out. Then he drives back to the left and is back to the right arm. He mirrors the ball like this very well. While this is happening, Hunter is controlling the ball handler by making contact with his chest and waist. He's so strong that guys just bounce off of him and it blows up the play. Let's watch one of these in real time. He can be beaten by combo moves though. Culver catches in the high post, rips through with a jab step, and then drives in the other direction, beating Hunter. Hunter got the best of the individual matchup in this game, but on the possessions that Culver won, it was because he strung together a nice combo move. So that begs an important question, how well can Hunter switch on to guards? I think he'll be just okay, but this is the downside to his strength and size. He's going to be a very good defensive player either way, but if he can do this, he's going to be a great one. I love how he contests jumpers. He often gets his hand up before his man can get into his shooting stroke, forcing them to put more arc on the ball at the last moment in order to avoid it getting blocked.
and he gives great effort to get back to the shooter. Here he hedges on the ball screen and then scrambles to get back to his man on the pick and pop. He combines all of what we've seen so far in close and recover situations. Here he closes out to the shooter, mirrors the direction of the drive with his arm, controls the ball handler by using the bump with his waist, and then contests high after cutting off the drive. This is one of the hardest things to do on defense and he executes it perfectly. His help defense is a bit of a question mark, but more due to his team's defensive scheme. Virginia plays what's called a pack line defense. Without getting into all of what that means, they help from one pass away, leaving shooters open to cut off penetration. Hunter was good on these, but NBA defenses generally don't do this unless they're helping off of a non-shooter. They usually ask players on the weak side to make certain rotations instead. Here are more NBA style help situations where Hunter's on the weak side and has to determine if the pass is going to go to the roll man or to the shooter after the pick and roll. He was pretty good on these in the few situations where I saw him, but the sample was too small to draw much of a conclusion from. I don't love his off-screen defense, even if his numbers on these were very good in college. He eats a lot of contact on screens. Part of this is his size, part of it is identifying where the screen is coming from before it gets there, and part of it is footwork. Two of those are fixable, but I think he'll struggle to chase guys around screens early in his career. He should be a better defensive rebounder than he is. There are way too many plays where I find myself yelling, go get the ball, when he was just standing there and watching. And other plays where he'd get overpowered where he's just too strong for that to happen. Alright, so let's slow down his shot. After he catches it, he dips it into his shot pocket, which is around his waist. That's pretty normal. Then his set point is just over the front of his head, which is also conventional. He's in good balance where you can draw close to a straight line between his feet, hips, and shoulders. Now we move forward with the ball. The thumb on his left hand is a little too involved for my taste, and you can see it flick forward here and that'll impact the ball, but that's about the only negative that stands out to me. These shot mechanics are easily repeatable and you can get them out of a number of different situations. He shot a blistering 43.8% from three this season at Virginia. His release is slow though. If you saw this crazy block by Zion, Hunter was the victim on the other end of that. That slow release is gonna impact the volume of threes that Hunter is able to get up more than his percentage. He was fantastic at making contested jumpers, but there are other possessions where he doesn't even take the shot where another player would probably be able to let it fly. He played a lot of four in college and began many plays around the basket as a result. He'd often recognize opportunities to space the floor and back into his threes. He's good at driving to the basket when teams close out too hard to his jumper, although a lot of times he's out of control and is probably going to pick up a number of charges his rookie season. He also rarely shoots a one dribble pull up on these as a result. He's good at driving and kicking to shooters or dumping off to bigs on these though. I like his passing ability overall. He's not going to make primary shot creation reads, but he's the type of guy who makes the right pass within the offense, whether it's a high low to a big, a quick swing pass to another shooter, or a good post entry pass. You need guys like these in order to really maximize the shots that you get.
So let's move to his on-ball offense. He's a bully in the post against mismatches. This is valuable in an NBA that switches as much as it does, and he can dribble himself into the post on these rather than just relying on post-entry passes. But my biggest concern is his ball handling ability, especially with his left hand. You also see him get stripped a lot on a fairly regular basis, which speaks to the possibility of his hands maybe being on the small side. There are times where he shows off some nice off the dribble moves, but overall it's one of the weaker elements of his individual offense. That ball handling, along with the below average first step, means that he has to shoot a lot of pull-up jumpers when he's asked to create for himself on the perimeter because he can't get by his man. He's not very good on these type of shots. He's a good finisher around the basket where he gets to show off that strength and some creativity around the rim as well. He's very right hand dominant though, often throwing up some BS that brings the ball back into the defender rather than take the correct shot with his left hand. These get blocked a lot as a result. I think the key to his offensive game is his ability to shoot off of screens. He didn't do it a ton at Virginia, but I liked what I did see. If he can knock these down at a respectable clip and volume, it gives him a key role outside of just being a spot-up guy who can bully smaller players. He's an irritating screen setter who pulls up way too short and doesn't make contact, or doesn't make the effort to go find his guy at all. He's used to a slow style of play and will have to break some old habits. Ideally, you want to see your wing try to push this into the open court, but Hunter pulls it back instead. In the NBA, I think his transition role will largely be hitting threes like these. DeAndre Hunter walks into the NBA capable of playing important minutes, which can't be said of many prospects. He's physical and smart, doesn't make many mistakes, and finishes well off of the shot creation of others. It's foolish to say a player will never be able to do something at this point of their careers, but you do have to make some educated guesses. I think it's unlikely he ever becomes one of the main guys that you give the ball to to create a shot in the NBA. So if that's the case, how high do you draft a guy that's neither a big nor a sniper that can make every type of three? Don't get me wrong, Hunter can shoot, but it's at a relatively low volume. But he's got elite wingspan and size, combines that with intelligence, toughness, and fantastic fundamentals. His coach is going to love him. From a Lakers perspective, he's a really nice fit next to LeBron, Lonzo, and Ingram in particular. They need guys who can space the floor and finish the open looks that they create, and don't need the ball in their hands to have an impact on the game. Hunter fits the bill there, and the perimeter defense of Lonzo, Ingram, and Hunter sounds like a hell of a lot of fun. I haven't done my deep dives on Jarrett Culver or Darius Garland yet, so I'm not going to compare them, but I will say this. I like to swing for the fences in the draft and try to get a shot creator, because I think you can get guys who can play defense and hit open threes elsewhere. But the Lakers are in a strange position of being a team with the fourth pick in the draft that also has designs on making a run in next season's playoffs. If they keep the pick, how important is it that that player is able to contribute right away? Hunter's probably the guy who is. But I'm of the opinion that you always draft for long-term success. DeAndre Hunter probably wouldn't be my pick at number four, but I wouldn't be upset at all if that's who they ended up drafting. Laker Film Room is dedicated to helping you enjoy the Lakers and the game of basketball on a deeper level. If you'd like to support the type of content that we create, please click the Venmo or Patreon links below. Alright, that'll do it for this one. I'll catch you guys next time.